Hey guys, this is Lee here. And in this video, I'm going to share with you an exclusive interview with the 2022 International Masters Champion, Paul John Patton from Seville Yacht Club. Okay, so we have PJ Patton here. Paul John Patton is uh, reigning uh, 2022 International Masters Champion. Uh, congratulations. So uh, what was your secret for uh, winning this regatta? Uh, secret, I would say there were a lot of good people and uh, I tried to keep it somewhat conservative at the start and, and other people made mistakes. I made a few myself, but mm -hmm. um, was able to come back and had good speed. Okay, good. So I wasn't here to watch you sail, but the first day I saw you had a 232. So it sounded like you had enough speed. Did you know you had enough speed right off the bat to keep up with everybody? Yeah, I felt like I had good speed. I, uh, Doug also had very good speed and, and Eugene just had probably as good a speed, just made a couple of mistakes that, that cost him and he broke down today. Okay, and then so how did you set up your boat today? Like where was your gooseneck? I was, uh, last race I was at 17 and I had a tight upper spar and I was, she hard. And then, I'm sorry, uh, how, what was the wind going out about that? It's been 12 to 15. And maybe. were you adjusting your gooseneck back and forth? I was at probably 14 and a half at one point when it was light. Uh -huh. And uh, I moved back to 17 before that last race. Okay. And did you use a, a double <coughs> halyard Jens rig? Two halyards. Okay. Top halyard was, uh, they were both tight. Okay. Oh, so you do, um, you adjust the tightness of the top halyard depending on the wind speed? For spar bend. Okay. So can you explain to you what, what you're looking at? How, how, how far is your uh, upper and lower? Uh, uh, two sail clips. Two sail clips. That's huge. And 17 inches on the uh, drop for the second halyard. Okay. And I'm using the upper halyard kind of like a backstay. Okay. All right. So now, or, or a head stay when it's when it's light to make the spar stiffer. So when you're when it's light, just say if it's it's ten. Are you both tight? It depends on the waves. Really? So the waves were, it was relatively flat at times. Okay. And uh, when it's flatter, I can ease that one a little bit, let the spar bend and point a little higher. Now, have you figured this stuff out over over practicing, Doug and? Mike and I have been with uh, Mary Ellen and a few other, Danny Hess and mm -hmm. a few others have been working at this oh, good. for the course of the year. Do you think that's, uh, well obviously it's going to help, do you think it has made a huge difference in, in uh, your performance? It helps in confidence, it helps oh, okay. knowing you know where you are with other really good fast people Right. and I would say that we're not all you know the same body types but right, right. you know we can be confident in, in our settings and the mm -hmm. way we set it up and, okay. and uh, that probably helps the most. I mean, I'm the heaviest and mm -hmm. I'm heavier than even I was So what do, you, what do you weigh right now, if you don't mind me asking? I probably am over 200 with gear. Okay, 200 with gear, uh, you're about six foot tall or so? A little less. Okay, you're, so we're about the same, same size. So. Yeah, you're a little taller. Now, I know one of your best friends or your best friend is, is Eduardo Cordero, eight-time world champion, and he does not like the Jens rig. Hey guys, before we get to the rest of the video, I'd like to just ask you to tap that like button down below and turn it blue. It helps out the channel a lot and lets YouTube figure out which content to share with like-minded sailors just like you. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. Stick around to the very end of the video because this interview is chock full of useful information that you could use right away. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. I read all the comments. And now, back to the interview with three-time international Sunfish Masters champion, Paul John Patton. Or the, the multiple things. So I know you guys have influenced each other over the years. So what do you, what do you say with his philosophies versus your philosophies at that point about the gens rig? Well, Eduardo always sheets very hard. Okay. I think uh, to have, I think you have to sheet hard. I think the, you know, the Connor and, and uh, John Paul and, and uh, um, 
Martinetti are all you know trimming very very hard. Even on starboard, both tacks. Okay. And and the spars are bendier than they used to be. Yeah. And uh, I think you know this is a time where you know the a lighter person could win the world. And Martinetti was 135 and sailed you know as well in 25 knots as right as we've seen anyone you know as David Mendelblad has sort of taught everybody at that. Yeah, that that's way. true. That's true. <laughs> so here we are. We're talking with PJ Patton from Sable Yacht Club from New York, and I just want to, you know, I'm the New York rep and want to congratulate you to leading the top three sailors who also reign from New York. Uh, that's kind of cool that you had, who was second? Doug Kokainen? Doug was second and Mike was third. And Mike Ingham squeaked in past uh, Eugene on basically the last race, huh? Pull the four, yep. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. If anyone doesn't know PJ, PJ has does a lot of teaching. He coaches down at uh, Point of Woods. Point of Woods. Point of Woods in New York on Fire Island. And he also has a company called Starboard, uh, Starboard Passage. I use that for private teaching. Pretty busy these days with uh, kids and work and work. Right. All right, so, but if anyone was interested in contacting you for private coaching or group coaching, they can go to starboardpassage.com and, and get and contact you. Right? Sure, or email me. Right, PJ Excellent. at Starboard Passage, and, and uh, yeah, Mike and Doug and I and, and uh, Mary Ellen and Danny have put a lot of time in, and we've all of us are very good at helpful questions and more than happy to help. Excellent. Now, um, if you could give me like one or two pointers for someone in the middle of the fleet that had to deal with conditions, medium to hard conditions today and they're not gonna be in the top 10 or competing against you. What would you suggest to those, those middle fleeters who wanna move up? Number one thing that I see people need to do more is to have enough bang on. Okay. And the way that to know that you have enough and whatever wind condition is when you're fully sheeted on starboard tack, uh -huh. the ring doesn't move. Okay. If the ring moves or it becomes loose at all, you don't have enough and you'll go sideways on starboard. So, like on land, you're you're in head to wind, I guess. Not you're even. You could hard. be out in the water and 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 you know on a on a beam or or close reach and mm -hmm. and put one hand on it and pull it, you know, have the line around the uh, the, the port side of the cleat and pull it on and then wrap it and right get now it tight like that. Would you do that if it's less than ten? I have the bang on, so the gooseneck stays down in any wind condition. Okay. Now and also, um, what? Other things have you thought of? Uh, I don't have, I got here too late, but explain a couple of things on your boat. You have a 17 inch Jens, mm -hmm. and can you explain? So I don't call it a Jens. Jens, okay. is, Jens is a drop so that the, the top spar becomes very flexible. Okay. And uh, Eduardo and I played with that a lot. You lose the control of the, the upper spar at a certain point. Mm -hmm. a few people use small, uh, Jens, right. so to speak. Yeah, uh, that's what Hank, I do. Hank and uh, yourself and and uh, Eugene, mm -hmm. small, right. So that the the, the spar is flexible, but mm -hmm. not too much. Right. I don't think that they're using more than like six, eight, twelve inches right. at the most. Mine's like a six inch. I'm a small Jens. Yeah. And and people have done that in the past. I think having the ability to have control over the top spar, mm -hmm. and even pull it on tighter is helpful. And and I think. You know, being able to let the spar bend, right, and and move the uh, the whole sail plan back by mm -hmm. going down the spar on the lower halyard is helpful. Okay. Now, one thing that's really unusual about your boat and your boat setup that I've never seen anyone has is your hiking stick. Your hiking stick has a a curved, I would say, handle. Can you describe? Well, that? It's a cut off crutch, and I have to replace it because it's not stainless. But it's it's a it's like a you know a round cut crutch cut off oh there it is oh look at this thing oh it's a just oh it is a crutch mm -hmm. and and the reason for that is because in the sunfish you're trimming one to one uh -huh. so that you you can with the the um rotating tiller extension okay universal uh -huh. i can keep my hands in line with the sheet and trim with both hands okay so no matter what you know point of sail or angle or where i am i can turn the the uh the tiller extension and and keep it in line with the like perpendicular to the sheet. Huh. So, the, is so I'm there not anything... doing this. I'm not doing this with my you know holding the. Okay. So now, when when you're sailing in heavy wind, where, where's your where's your hands like in relation to your body? 
I mean, ideally, you know, the tiller's long enough and you can cheat with both hands. Uh-huh. Okay. And and I also have a like a little lanyard at the end of the thing so that if I do if it slips out of my hand, it has a knot and I'll and I'll sometimes huh. let go of the tiller. How long is your tiller extension, you know? Probably 40 inches. It depends on, you know, I have that like a line on right. the end of it, so Huh, that's cool. PJ, I heard that um when you were coming in today, there was something with with Lynn Randall, a sailor. And she tipped from... over. She was upside down. There were a lot of people that were upside down for a while. And so, what happened with Lynn? She was upside down, and she was tired. And I, I, you know, I saw her. I saw somebody sailing around her, but there was no power boat. I went over. I pulled her into my boat, and then we righted her boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I let her. I got in her boat, laid the sail down, and they towed her in. Wow. Well, I talked to Lynn, and she she was was fine with the, uh, us talking about this, and she was very grateful that that you came up because what she described to me, it was she was coming in, and the tides and the winds and the bouncing off the buildings, she actually capsized for a second or third time. The boat sailed away from her, and then she was really exhausted. Yeah, she had a line attached to herself to the you know she was with the boat. But, okay. But um, yeah, it was very shifty and, and there were some auto attacks and particularly under the bridge, the wind was coming around the columns. Right, right. And uh, I almost tipped over to windward myself. Oh, wow. So that was, uh, that's something that a lot of people don't see. They see your, your great performances, um, but you know, you came to help, you know, a sailor when they needed help. So congratulations on your, uh, what was your, uh, what was your line? It was like, what was your worst race today? A four. Oh, hold on, a four. So, and then how many races did you actually win? Uh, just two. Wow, out of nine? Nine. So that's good, really consistent. And now I guess that was the secret. And then that-, that Consistent. So that's awesome. So congratulations, PJ. Let me get let you get back to uh, New York and uh, thanks a lot. Thanks, Lee. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, please check out the video right here. I'm sure you'll like that. And I'll see you on the water.